one of the things that's really useful to start with is understanding why people are fearful and, um, and the history and the legacy of the history that we have. So if you're dealing with a client who's 80 years old or 90 years old, they're born in you know, 1919, their entire adult life they have been classified as criminals for the for partners of their choice. They were considered to be um, uh, insane also. It was only taken off the DSM in 1973, I think. So th there's been an extremely good reason to be closeted uh, and to hide your identity. And this really underpins the whole, uh, the whole narrative for older LGBTI people. Their history affects absolutely who they are. They've been discriminated by the state, by their families, by their communities, by their workplaces, by religions, um, by the medical profession. So there's been mainstream uh, victimization, not just you know beat, being beaten up in the street, but like all the institutions that make up our society have also discriminated against them. So it's, it's really profound. And, and for that reason, uh, this is a group of people who may or may not uh, openly identify as LGBTI. So one of the things I would say to carers is uh, also to acknowledge that if somebody does come out to you, that you make a really, um, a, you make a strong acknowledgement of that. Say, thank you for telling me. Because you, you can't guarantee that they're going to do that, and in fact you can don't expect it. Don't expect it if they do. But having said that, there's a whole spectrum. There are people who are very, you know, out there, very, no, no problem. And then there's people that you would never tell. Well, not only may you not know, it also actually shouldn't be your aim. And this is kind of a, uh, a catch-22 because a lot of people think, oh, if I make you feel comfortable, you will come out to me. If I make you feel comfortable, you may come out to me, or you may not. And, uh, but if I make you feel comfortable, you are comfortable, whether or not you come out to me. And that's the important thing. And by doing that, you are reducing the stress level and the fear level of your clients. So even if you don't know who they are, so what you're doing, in fact, is to treat everybody as if they are potentially not heterosexual, if they are potentially gay, lesbian, transgender, because you don't know, it isn't on, stamped on the forehead, you can't tell like the colour of the skin, but you also can't make an assumption. Well, unpacking cultural safety is really important. It means that somebody in that space is safe, but how do you create that? And I think it's threefold. Um, the first thing is to really understand that history. Um, and then, then, then that puts you in a position of um, being able to appreciate the other person where they're coming from. Uh, the second part to cultural safety is also understanding the power dynamic between you as a care provider and the client. And if you appreciate that it's not just you being tolerant or, you know, then you've got a tolerator and a tolerate <laughs> And then you've got this power thing still happening. You know, it's got to go beyond that. It's got to be to a full acceptance and a full support. It goes beyond accepting into um, support and celebration. So this person is a whole person, not somebody that you're just out of the goodness of your heart accepting. So, you know, that that's moves up that notch and really understanding the power that comes behind being the provider. Um, and the third aspect that we bring into it, which is really critical, is ourselves. What do I bring? What do I bring to this communication, to this relationship? And being self-reflexive, being honest about, oh, if I don't feel comfortable in a situation, why not? Just, you know, running this, and it's okay because, you know, we've been indoctrinated for, in all our lives to, to be fearful of different things. And, and to be fearful of difference. And uh, so, you know, it's just worth really being aware of our own prejudices, because we have them, even though we think we don't, and, and making sure that we make, a, you know, we, by understanding ourselves, then become as comfortable as we can possibly be about sex and sexuality. So then that just communicates naturally, yeah.